All this worrying about Brexit and getting out of the EU so quickly. If the Tories wanted to get out of Europe so fast, little did they know all they needed to do was hire Scotland football manager Alec McLeish. Dear, dear Scotland, this is a new low. Hello everybody, how are you doing? Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Sean and I'm a vlogger from Edinburgh in Scotland. Thank you so much for joining in, it's great to have you here. If you're new, please don't forget to hit the red subscribe button and then you will be part of the family from here on in. I'm just going to jump right into today's video because we have something important to discuss. Scotland. It's a beautiful place, an amazing place, a beautiful, beautiful country with so many amazing landmarks. And I do my best to show off a lot of these sites throughout my channel and my videos. I'm very proud of that. But as to the title of today's vlog, Scotland is in fact rubbish. Doesn't it make you proud to be Scottish? It's shy being Scottish! Please allow me a few minutes of your time to explain. I'm not really sure the world truly knows or appreciates or understands this, right? But in Scotland, Football is everything. And when I say football, you guys from around the world might know it as soccer, right? That is everything to us. It always has been. When I was a kid growing up in a housing scheme in Edinburgh, all I could think about, all I cared about was football. And it meant everything to me and all of my friends and basically everybody I knew growing up. If you see photos of me when I was a kid, I would be wearing one of three things and that is a football t-shirt from either of the teams that I, I sported. First of all, Heart of Midlothian, my football team from right here in Edinburgh, I wore their strips basically permanently for years. Also, I would wear the Scotland top quite a lot and also I took a Shining to Brazil as well, surprise, surprise. But I just cannot stress how important how fundamental football was for us growing up in Scotland. It was such a big part of our identity. I mean, you might try and associate Scotland as being a country of rugby or golf, but don't listen to any of that, right? Because that's actually quite a small section of society who are into those sports. The real people, the sport of the people is football. Always has been, but maybe not for much longer. See, when I was a kid, right, growing up in the 90s, Scotland, we were still not that good of a football team or national team, right? But we still had hope because we did tend to qualify for a couple of major tournaments. The European Championships and the World Cup. I still remember so fondly of Scotland actually getting to some of these tournaments and actually being able to watch our heroes getting on the pitch, lining up with the Scotland shirt on. You know, it used to be so emotional. I mean, let me be clear, we never used to advance very far in those tournaments. But at least we participated. And that built our excitement, that got us involved. France 98, I will never forget France 98, the feeling of Scotland being at France 98, lining up against Brazil. And yes, we did always arrive home before the postcards. But listen, nonetheless, participation, like I said, is everything. At least we can hold on to that. Or at least we could hold on to that, because nowadays, we can't. It's been like decades since Scotland was last in a major tournament of football. Just over 10 years ago, Scotland was playing to qualify for the European 2008 Championships. And we had this group which contained France, right? To qualify for Europe, we were in a group with France and France had just won the World Cup. They were world champions and we were playing them at home and away. And guess what? We managed to win both those games. We beat France home and away, but this is Scotland's problem, right? We play well, we play really well against the big teams like France and all the important teams you can think of. Scotland always puts in a performance. We might, we might not win those games, but we play well. And then we get beat by all the silly little teams around the world. And a funny story about that exact tournament. I remember a man called James McFadden scoring from 40 yards out and it sent Scotland into absolute euphoria. McFadden is going for goal! James McFadden scores the best goal he's scored for his country! Absolutely sensational! Goal! Oh, I don't believe it! Oh, I don't believe it! <laughs> Quickly, let's Jesus, go what Gordon. a goal here for Scotland! Who McFadden. scored, Gordon? James McFadden, what a goal! I was actually in my friend's house. A couple that I used to work with from South Africa and another guy that I worked with from Scotland, we all went to watch this game. And for some reason, I don't know what happened, but just as James McFadden was lining up with his boot on the ball, the TV went blank, right? And then it came back to us with the ball in the back of the net and none of us could understand what was happening because surely we hadn't scored, right? Well, we had. But it wasn't to be, like I said, we got beat by lots of silly little teams there on after and then that was us. We never qualified and I think I've never been able to watch Scotland properly since then. And that has been Scotland's story ever since. Like, we put in brave performances against big teams but we can't get through ultimately because we get beat by lots of small teams. I mean, we're a small team as well. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. I'm certainly not one to do that. When I say small teams, I'm including Scotland, but teams that we should be beating nonetheless. So fast forward to today, exactly today, Scotland against 
Kazakhstan. I put the game on because I thought, well, here is a chance to see Scotland winning a game of football, right? Surely this one is in the bag. Oh boy. First game, the very first game in the qualifiers for next year's Euro 2020 tournament. 10 minutes into the game, Scotland were losing 2-0 after just 10 minutes. And I, as well as just about everybody in this country, turned the TV off in a fit of rage. And it ended actually 3-0 to Kazakhstan. And that led to pundits, for example, on the BBC saying that was Scotland's most abject defeat ever in the country's history as a footballing nation. It's just embarrassing. Honestly, I think this man spoke for the nation when he said Say something. Yeah, say something. Was shy. And listen, I mean this is no disrespect to people from Kazakhstan when I say Scotland should be winning that game any day of the week, no matter where it's played around the world. Scotland should be winning that comfortably. But instead, we were comfortably beaten and made to look amateur. And you know what? I'm kind of feeling like we might as well just give up. Like, this is not for us, obviously. This generation is a lost footballing generation in Scotland. It's over, lads. And you better believe it. Our friends from south of the border have been having great fun today. And I think they will never, ever let us forget about this defeat. The memeing and the trolling online has been relentless, to say the least. And I thought I would do a wee bit of a review of some of those memes right here on today's video. Following the BBC's announcement of the defeat and in their interview with the manager Alex McLeish, I'm not really sure I understand this because I don't know the context. Unfortunately, it was like the Battle of Solway Moss when 18,000 Scots lost to 3,000 English. Okay, I'll take your word for it. And here we go, some people from down south proclaiming their joy at what they saw today. Chicken stock, beef stock, laughing stock, that is us. This bad right here, Scottish Federation. Honestly, Scotland fans, that was the worst result I've ever seen. Alex McLeish, the worst result you've seen so far. Mimicking Homer and the Simpsons then. I mean, what is he doing there? He needs to get out. Like, he's had his go as Scotland manager years ago. He failed then and he's failed now, clearly before even starting. <laughs> I like this one. The meme image of Neymar wearing the Jimmy hat. That famous picture of Neymar from a couple of weeks ago looking really sad when he was playing for Paris Saint-Germain. And here we go back to that famous monologue in Trainspotting. That has been brought up by many Scottish people today because it's kind of how we feel. It sums us up perfectly. I mean, that monologue of Trainspotting sometimes feels like it should be some kind of constitution for Scottish sporting failures. Most wretched, miserable, servile, pathetic trash that was ever shot into civilization. That's the thing, like, we had such low expectations, but like, can they get any lower? Yes, they can. This is a problem with European qualifiers. Big teams like Kazakhstan have to play farmers like Scotland. I would be mad, but I can't be because it's true. Kazakhstan have won by three goals in just five competitive fixtures in their history. You wanna know who else they played in one 3 nil? Macau. I mean, isn't that like a casino gambling city of China? Nepal and Andorra twice. UK general public, Brexit is our biggest humiliation in Europe in living history. Scotland's national football team. Hold my beer. Let's talk about Borat really quickly here because the memes are obviously going in that direction and there's been a lot of Borat memes flying around today. I mean, it's funny and all that. I mean, it is funny, but let's be clear. Borat is a fictional character and he portrays a very fictional image of Kazakhstan, a wrong image, just to be absolutely crystal clear on that. But you know what? I can forgive the English for trolling us this afternoon because let's face it, we have done it to them countless times and they've given us so many opportunity as a footballing nation over the years to troll them. Some people hate the English, I don't. They're just wankers. England have this knack of arriving at a World Cup tournament and like kind of boasting to all the world and anyone that will listen about how they're the favourites and the best team in the world and then they get beat by teams like Iceland. Which, by the way, we absolutely loved and celebrated in Scotland as if it was us that was beating them. Don't go around telling the world you're this and you're that and you're actually not. What I will say is, in Scotland, at least we know we're rubbish. And on that bombshell, thank you so much for watching. It has been great to have you here. And until the next adventure, I hope you have a good night, morning, evening, afternoon or whatever time of day it is, wherever you are in the world. Take care.